Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we'll look at another very impressive mod, which if you have not seen already, is called the Elite Dangerous Hollow HUD, which is well this lovely thing you see in front of you. Now there's not currently anything being displayed on this screen, because we need to make the cockpit the main cockpit in the control panel itself. So pressing I, come over to the control panel, find your cockpit listed right there, coming all the way down to main cockpit, toggling that, and now we get fancy display, which is straight from Elite Dangerous. But it's not a direct lift from that game, no, the creator has gone one step further by completely refitting the UI to be compatible with Space Engineers. So what we've got on our screen, if I was to bring free camera all the way over so we can actually see what's going on, I can direct your attention to the different things I'm talking about. So we've got quite a lot of stuff, where right in the middle we've got ourselves our radar, which is going to be displaying all the stuff in our surrounding areas, such as enemy ships, neutral ships, allies, with a little square, with a colour corresponding to what they are. So to bring up the HUD and bring up all the signals, now there was an enemy nearby, so I'm not too sure where they've gone, I was actually hoping they were going to stick around for this showcase, but apparently they have not. But yes, if there's an enemy, there'll be a red square, if there's an ally, there's going to be a green square, and if it's a neutral target or an unknown target, will then be an orange square with then a line jutting out of it to show if you're above or below it. Then you can look at that a bit later on when I actually find some enemies or reload the game to make the space pirates reappear. But yes, we're going to ignore that and turn our attention down to this part right here. So on the left hand side, what we got is our fuel meter or even our energy meter for our power. This part up to here with the percentage is your power being used. So as we're the drive this thing around, that's going to shoot up and down depending on what type of power you're using with your ship. To be much more apparent using atmospheric or ion thrusters, hydrogen not so much. But over here and below this blue line here is your energy remaining. So as you were to fly around you've got a visual representation and then down to here is your total time remaining of your batteries, reactors and whatever. Over to the opposite side we then got one for our hydrogen. So down to here is your time in minutes and seconds of how much hydrogen is remaining as you're flying around. Over here on this blue bar is the same as the one over there. But this one's going to be your total hydrogen remaining and it will slowly tick down until you're empty and won't run out, and then of course that hits zero, and you're not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. Above that, this 000M is going to be your speed, so when we were to drive this thing around, moving forwards, there we are, we don't even need to have our HUD turned on, we get everything we need to know right over here. And of course coming to a stop, there we go. And yes, we can see our speedometer right next to that blue bar on the right hand side, that's so tick up, showing us our acceleration, so going all the way up, there we go, we're now at maximum acceleration, and we just keep going up and up and up until we hit 100 meters per second. Coming to the stop, that'll slowly go all the way down. Just a nifty thing that doesn't really add too much to the overall game of Space Engineers, but it's so nice to know if you have played Elite Dangerous in the past. Anyway, with my free camera once again, I've got to go find the ship wherever it's gone, somewhere over there, so I'll cut back when I'm back over at the ship. And here we are once again. So yes, on the very right hand side, we've got a very important bit of information, in fact, very important bits of information that really should be part of the base game because of how useful it is. This is the overall health of your vehicle and even your overall integrity of your cockpit which is displayed up there. So as the cockpit gets pummeled by guns that's slowly going to tick down and show you that you're at your impending doom or your cockpit's about to explode due to the damage you're taking. Down to here on this hologram is displaying the entire ship but also display what blocks are damaged. Now it's quite hard to actually get a close up of what's going on with it that's why I'm hoping to fly over to some space pirates in just a moment to show you it taking damage. Yes, the block slowly changed to a red, or the pixels of the ship will slowly turn red as it gets damaged and gives you an overall visual representation of what part of your ship is taking the brunt of the damage. To so say your left hand side of the ship on this one, this thrust pod on the side, is taking a lots and lots of damage. It's going to be glowing up red more and more and more, showing you that you need to turn the ship around and maybe let the other side take more damage, otherwise you risk the left hand side completely blowing up or falling off. Down to here is your overall integrity of the ship, so as you were to take damage, as those blocks take damage and turn red, this will slowly tick down and down and down, until eventually hit zero, where basically your entire ship will be completely nothing. Just a small representation of your overall health, which is always nice to know when you're taking small pot shots from small drones or other modded encounters. Coming over to the opposite side, here we go, this is a small aiming reticle, telling you if you're lined up with your target or not, that's easy for me to show in just a moment, so just go and skip all the way across over to this part. So over here, on this big bar on the left hand side, this is your ammunition remaining. So this is going to be displaying what you got on your ship, and of course all your guns on the left hand side to blast your enemies with. As you were to expend ammunition on your target, this will count down until eventually you hit zero, run out of ammunition, and we'll need to go and reload it once again. 
Yes, the final thing is all the way down to here on this little ring that you might be able to make out. Not too sure how well that'll go with the YouTube compression, but this is going to be your target locks. This is very similar to the base game locking system where you go up to a target, the red ring will slowly go all the way around, lock onto a target, and it'll give you a rough aiming reticle of where to shoot your guns. This is basically the same, but it's going to be displaying like that hologram over there. So you get a display of the enemy ship, it's going to do the same thing as blocks will slowly turn red as you pummel some parts of it, showing you which parts are taking all the damage and which parts need to take damage and all of that. Very useful if you are aiming at an ally ship to see where they're taking damage so you can say advise them to do 180 to limit the amount of damage one side is taken to make sure they don't say blow up a hydrogen tank and whatnot. And of course it's got several rings that will appear showing the jump capability of their ship but that will require me to spawn in the ship which I think I'll do right now because there's not much else to talk about the overall visuals of this until we actually start to fly this thing around. So grab hold my character, hopping out of here, zooming all the way away, what ship we're going to choose of course, I'm going to go for the good old albatross. Just copying that, slapping that over into the distance. There we go. Now getting back into the cockpit and looking at the HUD. There we go. So right in front of me, what you probably notice is that we've got ourselves a green square, showing you that there's an ally right in front of me. Now to give you a quick demonstration of what I meant by the lines jutting out of it as you were to move up and down, let's look all the way up. Here we go. We see that the green square slowly moves down and then it'll keep going down, down, down. Let's just move all the way up and slowly move away from it. The line will slowly get longer and longer and longer, showing me just how far away that ship is from my ship. Let's say look all the way down. There we go, now it goes above, showing me that that allied ship is now above my ship. That I need to realign myself, such as like that. Now it's perfectly in front of me, I can fly all the way up to it. If I was to lock onto it with my right mouse button, instead of having the traditional space engine just lock on, it gets completely replaced by this one right here. This is such a cool feature. But there we are, we now see the HUD on the left hand side, show me the albatross, we see it's got three rings so it can jump three times, and then below there we can see its integrity, which is a hell of a lot more than this ship's integrity, so it's going to be a very unfair fight if that was an enemy. But yes, right in the very front where we see we are locked onto it, we see the overall ship name actually put into this eye menu and into the info screen right here, and then below there we can see our meters away from it, so to get a bit closer, there we go. We also get Bluebeard information below it, showing us our time in seconds, minutes and hours, how far away we are from that target, so that's always good stuff to be able to judge when you're about to crash into something or when you should engage with your target. It's coming all the way up to it and set my gunning guns once again. And I can start shooting into it. There we go. And there we are, it's now starting to take damage. If I was to maybe damage some of the blocks, hopefully I can damage the block, I don't think I can. Will it update on the little screen to the left of me? It might be a bit difficult, I might need to attach a rock launchers onto it to make much more damage. And here we go. So I did have the cutout segment there because it was a small bug. And while well, it took me a while to figure out what was going on, but here is part of the albatross after I blasted it with a couple of rocket launches. And as you can see from the little heads up the screen on the left hand side, there's a bunch of yellow blocks, there's a couple of red blocks, showing me that the blocks are damaged, and that is, well, being in combat. Which is to show you the bug that I experienced over here, so looking at the rest of the body, looking at it like so, of course it's now going to work, but before when I was actually trying it out, it was just a massive red square, and wasn't displaying what was going on. So I'm now going to start blasting straight into the back of it. And there we go, you might be able to make out a few more blocks just lighting up. And there we go, that was the bug I was experiencing, where it sort of gets a bit confused as to what's going on. Anyway, moving across to that, because that's a small demonstration, what's not the intent of this video. We're now going to go find some space pirates and actually engage with them properly, and see our integrity take down, and of course all our blocks turn red, as we slowly take damage across the fight. So here we are, what I've done is found some space pirates. It's not what I wanted, it wasn't a ship that could fight me, but it's a small wreckage, it does have a Gatling turret on there, so I'm just going to lock onto it, there we go, if I can actually lock onto it properly, and I'm going to drive all the way up to it. So it's basically a bit dead Bruce, it's got a Gatling gun on the back of it, we see it's got a few damage blocks here and there, and we're just going to go do a frame shift drive, and just fly all the way over to it. Hopefully it won't be too quick, hopefully I won't go past it, but here we go. And there we are, we're now all the way up to it, and we're ready to engage. So as you can see on the HUD down to there, there is red, there is yellow, and there is a green right behind me. The green is this ship from a moment ago where I flew too close and it got absolutely shredded. That is an allied ship and how it looks like. But in front of us we can see the red, which is the enemy part of the station, and the yellow which is currently overlapping it, which is also the neutral part of that station, which is currently what we're looking at with the vanilla space engineer's HUD. Looking over to there, there is, there's the red, and of course there's the neutral. We don't need that, so we're going to hide all the HUD and drive all the way up to it. So we are in blue, we can see our seconds remaining of when we actually collide with it. And as we get closer and closer and closer, I want to make sure I turn it on my side. 
There we are, we now locked on, and if our guns were engaging, we'd actually blast straight into them, and precisely hit them. But there we are, there's a the Gatling gun. Now we can turn around, and let them shoot my back. And there we are, we are now starting to take damage. We see on the side there, on that HUD, it's slowly blinking, and our integrity is going down. We see all the blocks slowly lighting up, as they were to get destroyed by that Gatling turret. And just going to keep reversing all the way up. And hopefully, hopefully you'll do a nice lot of damage to the ship before it actually disables the system. Yes, we are slowly being ripped to shreds by that turret. And it, well, eventually does it. We seem to take a little pause here and there to think about where it's going to shoot. But that felt really bad. But we can see that HUD slowly glowing more red and red and red. But anyway, we're now going to turn all the way around, set the Gatling guns, and start blasting straight into it. So here we go, aiming straight forwards. And there we are, hopefully that will update on the HUD as well. I think it is. It might be, it might be not but it's really hard to tell. It looks like my guns have been disabled completely by that lone Gatling gun at the back there. And there we are, we can now see our cockpit integrity slowly ticking down on the side there. Now 24, that's going all the way down. Now 17, it's slowly going to break. And hopefully in a few seconds time, that Gatling gun will finish me off. And there we go, we now hit the threshold below. So I've got ejected out. And there we are with that. So that is how the UI works in combat and flying around, what it does and how it engages with the whole system of Space Engineers. And it's bloody fantastic how it's all been set up. What I'm going to do to end this video is go through all the other cockpits, showcase how this looks on them. So with my free camera over at somewhere safe, here we go, dropping all the way down and spawning in a brand new ship. Which ship do I want to use for this ending segment? I believe I'll go for that one up there, that'll do quite nicely. So copying that, dropping that down, yes it is an atmospheric ship, it does not matter because it would need to have the front of this thing. In fact, that'll do quite nicely. So this is a cab cockpit, popping inside, pressing I, coming up to here, and making it the main cockpit. And there we go, now just displays all the way over it. It does clip a little bit into the actual HUD itself. This is still perfectly usable and shows you all the important information. Popping out of this and deleting that one, so here we go, we're now going to get rid of that. I will get rid of all the stuff at the front here, don't need any of that. There we go. And I'll go and switch over to, say, the industrial cockpit, like so. Popping into this one, making this one the main cockpit. There we are, that's much more clearer. And the one they used, for example, on this Steam Workshop page, which what drew me to this mod in the first place. Popping out of this one and getting rid of that, there we go. Now come across to this one, I'm just going to plop it down like so, popping into the seat, pressing I once again, making it the main cockpit, and there we are, even in the Rover cockpit, can still get the overall HUD display, and yes, what's going on? But what about the saddle cockpit, which is used on so many land vehicles such as motorbikes or quad bikes? Let's go and test that out, so removing that, actually finding the saddle cockpit in this, because I did not have it on my HUD ready. So down to here, putting that onto the front. There we go, hopping inside. Once again, into this, down to here, and there we are. We can use it on the saddle cockpit to use on your quad bike or small land vehicle if that's what you want to do. As for that, that is pretty much it for this mod has it off. It's just a fantastic little thing. Oh, I did forget down there. As you can see, we've got 10,000 space credits, which is updated on the HUD. Actually, we're going to gain more and more space credits. I did forget that out when we went around the HUD itself. Anyway, yes, you can safely ignore that if you're not engaging with that system. But anyway, as I was saying, it's a fantastic mod using your world and easily replaces vanilla HUD, allowing you to see everything going on with your ship without needing to have the HUD display turned on. Of course, you might need to have that turned on to actually select your guns and whatnot on your ship, but for general gameplay, for general flying around, this whole HUD replaces that system and does look very elegant and doesn't seem to have any performance issues whatsoever, or at least none that I can see when playing this around and when I was testing it around. So yes, there'll be links to the description below for you to download and play around yourself. I'd recommend you do as well as a link to the Elite Dangerous Skybox I'm currently using, as well as a link to the frameshift drive that I use to shoot myself all the way over to the Space Pirates. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.